The Alpha Horizon. Thinking different. Acting aware. Hi everyone, this is Sylvia Merler, Head of Research at the Algebraist Policy and Research Forum. Thank you very much again for being with us on this podcast. Today we are going to talk about the European response to COVID-19 and what was decided in the latest EU summits. In the first half of April 2020, the Eurogroup proposed a set of economic measures to tackle this crisis. Can you give us an overview of these? The Eurogroup met earlier in April and agreed upon a package that is basically comprised of three measures. There is a temporary unemployment relief program that will be set up by the European Commission and will be endowed with 100 billion euros. There is an increase in the resources available for the European Investment Bank that will be able to mobilize about 200 billion euros in new investment. And finally, there is a new instrument that will be created in the toolkit of the European Stability Mechanism. This instrument will be a new credit line, which differently from what the ESM normally does, will be unconditional up to a certain amount and will be about 240 billion or 2% of the Eurozone members' GDP. The role of the ESM The European Stability Mechanism is intensely debated at the moment. What is it? How would it apply to this situation compared to the period before the pandemic? The European Stability Mechanism is the Eurozone firewall, which was set up in 2012 as an institution to lend to countries experiencing financial difficulties or at risk of losing market access. It is extremely important because before 2012, there was no institutions at the EU level that could do this task. During the Eurozone crisis, the ESM has been used to help Greece, Ireland, Portugal and Spain, but the way in which normal ESM lending works is with macroeconomic conditionality. This means that the requesting member state is also requested to perform structural reforms and fiscal adjustment in exchange for the ESM funds that it receives. The novelty of the new ESM credit line that was decided upon by the Eurogroup, however, is that this conditionality requirement is no longer there. The only condition is for the member state to use ESM funds to cover direct or indirect health costs associated with the COVID-19 crisis. Each Eurozone country will be able to request up to 2% of their GDP in ESM lending through this facility. On the 23rd of April, the European Council Summit discussed these proposals, with the hottest topics covered being the recovery fund and the issuance of EU bonds. Would you summarise the key results? The European Council endorsed the agreement reached at the Eurogroup level, so the ESM component as well as the Unemployment Relief Programme and the increase in the resources for the EIB. This package will become operative from June 1st. However, the reason why everyone was awaiting the European Council was to see what the leaders would say on the one element that the Eurogroup could not strike any kind of agreement on, which is the EU Recovery Fund. The EU Recovery Fund is a proposal by the French and the Spanish government to share the cost of the economic recovery and ensure that the symmetric COVID shock does not turn into an asymmetric recovery across countries that have very different fiscal spaces and ability to spend. The idea would be to share the cost of the recovery through some form of common European issuance or European borrowing. However, while there is agreement to do something in this direction, the European Council did not provide any political guidance as to the size of the fund or the structure that the fund should take. It delegated to the European Commission to come up with a proposal which the European Commission should do in the next two weeks, so we will need to wait a little longer to understand how this European Recovery Fund should look like. What do these decisions mean for European integration? To what extent are they effective responses to the crisis? Well, it is very positive to see that we are discussing solidarity much more openly and much more explicitly during this crisis compared to what we ever did during the Eurozone crisis. It is also very positive that the European Council endorsed the Eurogroup agreement because it does bring solidarity into the picture, particularly when it comes to the EU unemployment relief scheme that the Commission will be setting up. However, I believe that the Council really fell short of expectations on the EU Recovery Fund, which I believe is a key piece of the puzzle for the recovery going forward. 
COVID-19 in fact is a symmetric shock that will hit all countries in a similar way, but the recovery risks being very asymmetric due to different countries, different spending capacity and fiscal space. So to avoid that some countries in the future will be stuck with high debt and low growth and left behind, what you do need is some form of cost sharing along the lines that have been proposed by the French and the Spanish government. So hopefully the Commission will come forward with a very bold proposal for the EU Recovery Fund and the European Council will be able to strike an agreement around it. The Alpha Horizon. Thinking different. Acting aware.